Well, hello, Bethel Baptist Church. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to this week's study of ethics. Uh, over the last two weeks, we've been just looking at uh, kind of what is, that, is ethics and how we go about making ethical decisions. And as I've de- de- said before, the study of ethics is the study of the good and how we get there. And I think it is important for us Christians to study ethics because in studying ethics, as we're studying the good, ultimately we're, we're studying God and what he defines as good. And uh, we, are, we are studying how we go about determining the good, how we get there. Uh, but not only that, I think a helpful way for us to go about studying the good is by studying what the good is not and how we get there. And, and, and so... Uh, one of the things that we're going to be doing throughout these things is we're going to be looking at ethical systems of, of the culture, the surrounding culture in the world and what people take, because I think this is, can be helpful apologetic tool. And by looking at what is not, should not be defined as good, uh, we're going to come closer and closer to uh, being able to define what is good. And so because of that, uh, over the next few um, lessons, videos, whatever these are called. Over the next few of these, we're going to be looking at different systems um, of ethical ethical practice and uh, and be looking at how they go about defining good and then trying to, trying to understand where we might see this in our own culture. Now, <clears throat> for this, I'm going to be using this book, Beyond Bumper Sticker Ethics uh, by Steve Wilkins. It's a really helpful introductory book. I use it in my for my high schoolers, uh, and it just goes through 13 different ethical theories uh, that are out there. Well, 12, I'm sorry, uh, 11, 12 ethical theories that are out there. Um, <clears throat> uh, just explaining the uh, different theories, how they go about understanding the world and things like that. So I'm going to be using this as a guide uh, to look at a few of these. Now, the one we're going to start with this morning uh, or today is uh, is called cultural relativism. Cultural relativism. Uh, this is a very popular uh, theory, and I think one that we see in our culture today. To give you a little background and kind of define what cultural relativism is, uh, cultural relativism was. Uh, I mean, it's had a lot of different proponents, but a main one that you should be aware of is Ruth Benedict. Ruth Benedict wrote a book called Patterns of Culture. Um, she was a contemporary Margaret Sanger. Uh, she wrote this book called Patterns of Culture as an anthropologist who will look at multiple different cultures and then in looking at these different cultures determined that uh, there was no one standard of right or wrong. That all of these cultures had different standard. And so it was problematic. Uh, and really she was fighting against this Western cultural patriarchal uh, colonization trend. And she was very against these things. And so she wrote this book to fight against these. To say, why do you think that your colonization is the best way to do things? When there are so many other cultures, so much diversity out there. And it's very problematic for you to think that your culture is the right one. When all of these other cultures are doing it differently. And her main argument is, is that there is a diversity in the world. And so because of that, to say that there are absolute standards of moral judgment or moral right or wrongs based upon your cultural upbringing is problematic. There is no ethical system that is better than another. Uh, and, and it's problematic for you and arrogant for you to say that one is better than another. Uh, whatever is socially accepted is what is best. Um, in, in the introduction of her book, Patterns of Culture, she will write, No man sees the world through pristine eyes. And that's, that's kind of one of the main premises of her book, which is that no culture has abs- access to absolute truth. There's no real access to it. You're just doing the best you can in the culture that you are in. And so nobody has direct access to this truth. Now, <clears throat> to be fair... I want to make sure that you see that there's a distinction between moral relativism and cultural relativism. There is a a distinction that we need to be fair with. Moral relativism says that there is uh, no truth at all in society or anything, that all truth is relative to the individual. Cultural relativism, however, says truth is found within uh, the individual cultures in society, not with every individual within the society. And that's a major difference. And I think that the reason why it's a major difference, and we need to bring this up, is because 
in, in moral relativism, that's what we think is the primary driver of society. And I think for a while, the individualistic nature of society, and it is still prominent, and I'm not saying more, moral relativism isn't here, but I think we're starting to see a cultural relativism take way more precedence than a moral relativism. Because more cultural relativism, excuse me, is, is based upon mob rule and groupthink. So, <clears throat> because moral relativists would say there is zero absolute truth, none out there at all. A cultural relativist would say, no, there are truth, it is just found within what the mob or the group thinks is truth, and then you need to uh, follow what the group is. And so there is truth, it's just dependent upon individual societies. And one individual society can't tell another individual society that they're wrong, but people within the society can tell one another they're wrong. Now, we are seeing cultural relativism between even different cultural denominations or groupings in the United States. You have like the BLM culture, you have the democratic culture, you have the Republican culture, and, and there's a group think that happens within that culture that, uh, that, you know, we don't want to tell, there's a relativism among each of the groups, but within the group, it's not so relativistic. And so cultural relativism is, I think, a little bit more prominent today. And, and it really comes out in the way we think of other nations. It is, and it's really been used to attack Western culture uh, or Western uh, society uh, to say that you as a Western society cannot say your society is better than any other society in history, in time, or, or whatever other countries. And so to say that you think America is better or America does things better, yeah, it might do things better for you, but that's not true across the board. And so, um, and, it, and it's used a lot, cultural relativism, is used a whole lot, and I'm jumping all over the place to just give you a general idea of, of where you see this happening, but, but cultural relativism is used a lot to attack the history of Western civilization. The, colonizer, the colonizers uh, were completely wrong in thinking that they were better than the Indians that were already in uh, the United States. Uh, the uh, the British are wrong when they are in India, uh, the uh, colonizing India. The French are wrong. Western civilization is based upon a foundation of falsehood because all of Western civilization has begun with thinking our civilization is better and we think that we're right and you're wrong and so we're going to tell you you have to do it our way. And so cultural relativists would balk at this idea. And so a couple ways that you you see cultural relativism and that you're going to see this kind of philosophy spring out is going to be among the differing groups and groupings in uh, American society. You're going to see cultural relativism specifically uh, be attacking uh, the history of Western civilization. So those are some of the ways that you're going to uh, see it happen. Now, <clears throat> when you're dealing with cultural, when you're dealing with any ethic, you should ask three questions, three main questions that you should ask of the, the system. Uh, the first one is, what is good? Uh, we've already talked about it. How do they define good? The second one is, what is the main problem in the world? What does this system think the main problem in the world is? And, and the reason you ask that is because whatever the main problem is, is what is keeping people from the good. So what is good? What keeps people from the good? Or what's the main problem? And third, how do we overcome that problem? Or how do we get to the good? So what is good? What is keeping people from the good? And then how do we get to the good? Those are the main problem. And so when you're looking at cultural relativism, what is good? Well, good, very simply, is whatever the culture defines as good. Culture is good. Society is good. The culture in what they do are good. Uh, and, and so those things are good and um, helpful and right and should be strived for. The preserving of culture is good. The per preserving of society is good. So if that is what's good, then what is the main problem in the world? The main problem in the world is ethnocentricity, which is that uh, this idea that your ethnic, your culture is better than any other culture. Um, the main problem in the world is pride. The main problem in the world is a lack of tolerance, the lack of seeing the diversity in the world and respecting other people. And so how do we overcome this to get to the good? 
Well, first we have to shed our cultural pride. We have to be educated. We have to be enlightened. Um, we have to uh, not think of ourselves as better. And any culture that thinks it is better needs to be pushed to the side in any way. And so uh, you need to put down cultures. You need to attack cultures or ideas that think they are better than another. Now, one thing I think Wilkins does really well in his book is that he goes through the positives and the negatives of each of the systems um, from, a, from a more Christian perspective. And so uh, I'm going to give you just a, a taste of that. When we're looking at cultural relativism as a whole, there are truths that I think that we can pull out of it. Uh, the first truth would be um, the first truth would be this that cultural relativists I think rightly see that there is a diversity in the world there are diversity in cultures there is a diversity of thought and and those things as Christians we should be very willing to point out and 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 I think it's problematic to say that when someone becomes a Christian that their entire culture has to look like a Western culture. And and I think that there have been times in history where that has taken place problematically. If you, and even as missionaries go overseas, if you want to be a Christian, then um, you're going to give up your cultural heritage and you're going to become like a Western culture. You're going to take on that kind of persona. And I, I think that is problematic. And I think cultural relativism also does help us as if we were to really think about it and think as Christians, uh, what are the things that are liberty issues that cultures can keep from their culture that we shouldn't step in and try to take from them? Uh, I think that's an important question that we can ask. However, uh, there are a lot of negatives, a lot of negatives with cultural relativism. Uh, the first one is simply it's untenable and untrue. Cultural relativism is based upon the fact that there are no cultures that are better than another. And I know, and the reason people like cultural relativism is because it makes you feel like uh, you're being non-judgmental and kind. Um, but to say that some cultures are worse than another is not wrong. Uh, so for instance, we use cultural relativism to attack uh, colonization. Yeah, but what parts of colonization? So, for instance, when the British occupied India, there was a, a major practice of widow burning in India. And uh, the, uh, the, the British went in, they colonized it, and they wanted to keep that part of their practice. So, when a husband died, the widow would be burned uh, with her husband and die, even if she was alive. She would be burned alive. And the British came in and said, no, you can't do that. And they said, well, we're going to, this is our culture. And the British said, I don't care what your culture is. If you want to keep doing this, then we're going to try you for murder. And uh, we're going to kill people. Uh, we're, going to, we're, going to, we're going to kill people, try you for murder. If you keep killing widows, this is unacceptable. You're going to be under British law here. Now, uh, a cultural relativist would have to say, well, why do you get to come in and say that this is... But we could say objectively... No, a culture that promotes life, that saves life, is better than a culture that promotes death. And we shouldn't feel bad about that. Cultures that are not oppressive to women are better than cultures that do oppress women. There are absolute truths out there, and there are cultures that are better than other cultures. And there are parts of cultures that are better than other cultures. And it's simply untrue. Even as we look at the idea of trying to be cultural relativists in our own pockets in America, it's totally untenable because everyone who thinks they have the truth thinks that they have the truth and other people don't. And so it's just, it doesn't make sense. Uh, further, when you think of uh, cultural relativism, <clears throat> you need to realize that in Christianity, we are called to a new culture. We are a part of a new kingdom now. We are supposed to be sojourners and exiles. This world is not our home. And although we do live in the United States, most of us watching this will be living in the United States, uh, we know that it doesn't, that that isn't what defines us first, the culture of the United States. What defines us first is the culture of Christianity. And it's not relative. It is absolute truth that we are under the, the rule of God and under his kingdom and under the, the lordship of his son following the direction of his spirit. Uh, and so uh, this, 
this isn't relativistic. This is the culture we are called to. And within the United States, we are called to call to bring people into this culture. And so, uh, and, and so as a Christian, we can't possibly say um, that, well, all cultures are true or have truth um, completely and can do what they want. It's just untrue and Christianity would call us um, to something different. Um, and so <clears throat> I think it is fine for us as Christians to say that we think some cultures are better than another. And ultimately, we think the culture that is best is the culture of God and his kingdom. And those who are arguing for cultural relativism in any way that they see it today, um, those who are arguing for tolerance among the different cultures are typically the loudest for cultural change. Um, and, and typically the loudest because they certain they believe that certain things make things a better culture. And so really, this is just an untenable, unrealistic an unhelpful system uh, that I do not think leads us to truth at all. So that was a huge overview. I hope that was helpful for you. We will continue to look at more next week. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is, again, just the tip of the iceberg. I hope that you're able to continue to think down these lines of thought in a Christian way. Uh, so thanks again. Bye.